We are stuck in a fragile and volatile recovery, and everyone seems to be struggling with what exactly will be the new normal. As we look towards 2012, how is the outlook different than it was at this point last year? To find out, Editorial Director Lou Smirla spoke to leading motor carrier and shipping executives during our annual Decisions Roundtable. The event, sponsored once again by Shaw Tracking and conducted in partnership with the Toronto Area Council of CITT at the fabulous Maritime Ontario facilities in front of a live audience, brought together some of the most respected minds in transportation from across the country. Fragile and volatility are the right descriptors for the, uh, the economy today. And uh, certainly when you look at Europe and the, uh, the debt issues going on in Europe, uh, you look at, at France now uh, starting to uh, have a number of issues. You look at the debt levels uh, and the deficits in the U.S. and uh, for that matter even some uncertainty about, uh, about China and its economy and some of the underlying structures. I think a year ago I would, have, I would have thought that we'd be starting to come out of things, that we'd start to see some recovery with some legs. Um, you know, if I think back to 2010, if I remember correctly from uh, some financial numbers, GDP was 3.2%. Uh, this year it's estimated to finish off at about 2.2 and I think next year around 2.1. Mm -hmm. So I, I think next year is going to be a very challenging year. I think uh, volatility will be one of the challenges. I think certainly the first six months of the year we'll, we'll probably see a lot of continued weakening. Uh, across the uh, the global economies and and uh, I think Canada will still be known for for its two economies uh, resource and uh, and non resource <laughs> with resource being hot and uh, non resource uh, not being hot so I think I think it'll be a challenging year from what I see today obviously key to any economy whether it's the US or Canada is the consumer uh, and there's a lot of questions about uh, consumer confidence right now and the impact that has on the retail sector. Uh, Heather, over to you. How do things look from, from your vantage point? Obviously, Canadian retailers are very important to, to your operations. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because a lot of people ask me very specific questions about the book industry, which I think has got its own issues or own challenges uh, over and above, you know, just the economy itself. And, um, and I would say, you know, for my peers that are in retail, many of them will say that they're having a, an okay year. Uh, it, it's a decent year, not not a lot of growth, but certainly there's some decent growth. Indigo, on the other side, um, I think is very challenged because we have a format, we have this, this combination situation that's happening where, uh, if you don't know this already, we are the ones who developed a product called Kobo. And that's both an e-reader, but then a, a format to actually get an electronic book. And so we've, we've developed that and then recently sold it. So and people ask us a lot about, you know, you're in this environment where you've, you're actually um, uh, creating the demise of the product that you lean on the most. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is this, is that we believe that if, if we weren't in it, someone else would be. Mm -hmm. So we'd rather be part of the game. And then on the other side, what we're trying to do, or the, the piece that you'll see most when you come into the stores, is that we're, we're shifting the format. So I think that really is where retailers have to take a look at where are their strengths and how can they lean into the future with those strengths and create a format that is a great footprint for, you know, for, their, for their stores. And, and that's, the, that's the challenge Indigo has in front of it right now. Mm -hmm. So again, not just the economy, but you know, that, that profile of product. And, and frankly, when you look at, at many of the retailers, you know, you go, go take a look at the Bay. Uh, Bonnie Brooks has done some great things to bring back some footprint into her store, but then there's areas where she's, you know, peeling them off. And, and, and that's what's going to help us be successful. Okay. Uh, a lot of the trouble that we're having <coughs> stems from the U.S. Uh, so, Brian, I want to take it over to you now because you do a lot of business in the U.S. Uh, keeping that in mind, how do things look for you in 2012? And again, in comparison to where we would have been at this point last year, uh, particularly since you have a lot of dealings with folks in the U.S. Um, I'm a lot more confident this year looking forward than I was last. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think we, uh, like everybody else, for a couple of years, we were, I would call it survival mode. And now we're actually looking at some growth. I think there's a bit of a disconnect between the trucking economy and the rest of the economy. I get that there's a worldwide issues and there's ups and downs and I don't think you can look at the economy data. But the best thing you can do is like you turn the TV off and kind of look at the bigger picture. But I, I just think that the capacity issues that we went through and we were 
uh, I mean, we had a pre-buy in 07 for trucks and there was an overcapacity and then all of a sudden the economy took a dive like you'd buy 15 to 20 points, maybe 25 for some customers and it depended a little bit on your customer mix. But now I see capacity just about at balance. And I know next year is not going to be tremendous growth, but it's going to be 2% growth. And I think uh, we heard on, uh, la in the uh, earlier part of the week that, or last week that, you know, the automotive sector is starting to come back a little bit. Um, I think the consumers today are buying the products that they need to have. I mean, there's not a lot of frills being bought, so I don't expect to see shrinkage. But I, I, and, I, and we find on the U.S. side, actually, from a trucking perspective, it's stronger than it is in the Canadian side. Mm -hmm. There's a little bit more of a shortage of equipment there, and we're able to, to see better numbers, and, and, and there's a lot more capacity issues. Mm -hmm. We have customers that are calling us, and uh, they're trying to strong arm us into taking more freight than we have capacity for, which is kind of a unique situation, and we've waited a long time for it, but uh, likely stronger than we're seeing here. Okay, good news. Uh, Doug, I've, we've had many conversations about the economy o over the years, and I've always been struck by uh, how sane your, your comments sounded to me because you, you never got overly excited about the peaks, you never got overly pessimistic about, about the lows. When you look at uh, 2012, uh, what are your thoughts? Well, if I knew that, <laughs> I, I personally, uh, like a year ago, I was, uh, I feel the same way pretty much today uh, in terms of the, the market. I think we're, I think 2012 is going to be a tough year, would be my guess, looking at it today. Um, I just don't see a lot of good things, but I didn't see them back a year ago, and, and you know, it's been steady. And I, I believe that uh, with that said, that, uh, that that's, in a way, like I, I got to get out of bed like everybody else, and the problem is it's hard when you have a negative outlook on things. So my outlook is actually positive. I think things, although they're difficult in industry, I see that, like in our small realm and at MO, we've got a real good group of management that, that we've uh, developed. We've got probably the best team we've ever had, and uh, I think it's going to boil down to the companies that really provide a high quality service and are efficient, and uh, those companies will be in demand and that are well financed that can, can weather this storm. So in a way, these difficult times are bringing some better opportunities. So even though I think the times are going to be tough going forward, I think for the for the carriers that are well funded and that are efficient, and I think that's the key, efficient, low cost, that are able to operate uh, in that manner will survive and do well as the other carriers start to struggle and, and have been struggling mm -hmm. through these difficult years. 